Chrissy Moreno here at San Onofre State Beach. Thank you. And this is... Hi everyone, my name is Vicki and I'm visiting from Doheny State Beach here at beautiful San Onofre with Chrissy today. So we walk down here with our masks on, but we are socially distanced from everybody right now. See this nice wide open beach we found here in busy Southern California so that we could do this program and take our masks off so we can see our faces and see what's going on around us. So we are here in South Orange County at San Onofre State Beach. And this is a beautiful, very special place in Southern California. Behind me, you can kind of see part of the lagoon back here and the watershed. This is actually one of the last natural watersheds and creeks left in Southern California that has not been uh, paved over and concreted in. It is natural. Natural plants, soil here that helps filter the water as it reaches the ocean. We have nice clean, clear ocean out here full of life, full of the kelp forest ecosystem out here. And it's because of this natural watershed we have behind us. We have migrating birds that visit this watershed and lots of natural treasures and unnatural that we're going to find today. And Vicki's going to tell you more about that. Oh, so thank you for joining us. And as Chrissy said, we're at this beautiful place where Orange County and San Diego County meet. And you can see it's not too crowded. It's a beautiful place for you to visit and you're hopefully all enjoying visiting it with us today. And as Chrissy was saying, as soon as it rains or if there's a lot of water from irrigation or people washing their car, it opens up San Mateo Creek and everything in its path washes down along the shore. However, as Chrissy was also saying, there's a lot of natural filtration in place to keep it clean. So a lot of people, when they go to the beach, they don't take time to slow down and check out what might be found along the beach. So that's what we're going to do with you today. We're going to take you on a little trip along the shoreline here at beautiful Trestle to see what we can find. Okay, so are you ready okay. to take a walk? Let's orientate you a little bit to where we're at. So this is the lagoon behind me. This is looking north along the coastline towards San Clemente, California. And then behind me, I don't know if you just saw that train go by. The Amtrak just went by. There's some train tracks behind us. And then this is looking south this way towards San Diego, California. And this is called Lower Trestles, this beach that we're at today. So I'm going to kind of switch this around so that you can see where we are at. And we're going to walk over the sand berm and you can see the surfers out here in the beautiful Pacific Ocean. So beautiful, there's a blustery day here in Southern California. So hopefully all of you can hear us okay because that wind is blowing, making it really lovely. Yeah, so here we are. This is Lower Trestles. This is a world famous surf spot down here in Southern California where a lot of pro surfers come to this wave. And what makes the wave so great is the cobblestone rocks out here. It makes a reef. So it makes a cobblestone reef out here that makes the waves uh, perfect shape and long rides for the surfers. And all those cobblestone rocks come down San Mateo Creek, which was behind us over there on the other side of the sand berm. So all those rocks come down the creek and line this ocean here and make it a great wave. So there's a lot of surfers here that visit the beach, a lot of different animals that visit the beach. So we're gonna walk along and see we can find here and let us know if you have any questions in the comments we can read the comments and answer any questions you have about the area or what we're finding today on the beach and the waves are kind of small today they can get pretty big here and you can probably hear the wind hopefully these mics are helping us and you can hear us okay let's see what we're finding here on the beach not only are there good waves because of the, uh, the the cleanliness of the ocean water here, some people like to come down here and go diving or spear fishing because the water's so crystal clear and beautiful. And does everybody see all of this debris laying all over the beach? Anybody know what that is? What is all of this stuff on the beach that we're seeing? 
we're gonna look up close at some of it, but most of this is kelp or seaweed or sea lettuce. Um, there's all different kinds of seaweed out there in this kelp forest ecosystem. So this is all stuff that has washed up from the ocean onto our beach. And this kelp forest is actually really important because it provides a home, a habitat for the animals out in the ocean, but it also, uh, when it falls to the, to the ocean floor, provides nutrients as well. So the whole ecosystem is very important out here in the ocean. Uh, so this is uh, all kelp laying along the beach here and seaweed, but we're gonna find some cool stuff in it. So let's look. I think I found something here. Let me pick it up and see what it is. a skeleton of a California spiny lobster and you can see the the arms are still here the tail this is the yummy part that you would eat if you ate a lobster all inside the tail here but we find these exoskeletons all over the beach because usually it either washes up and the birds eat the inside all the yummy meat inside of there and leave the, the shell behind so we might find these sometimes we find the whole head and everything and these California spiny lobsters live out here in the kelp forest in the seaweed and under the rocks and they're nocturnal animals. They actually wake up at night to go find their food and they eat all kinds of different crustaceans on the ocean floor. Mussels, even like the little tube worms and stuff like that. So that's kind of cool that we found that. So when you're out at the beach where there's kelp, look for these. Here's actually, I found the head. <laughs> Here's the head with the little antenna and you can even see its eyes there. So that's kind of cool. So that's the head of the lobster, spiny lobster. Okay, let's keep walking and see what else we can find. So this hold fast attaches to the rocks on the bottom of the ocean and this kelp grows up all the way up to the surface of the ocean. It can grow hundreds of feet and the, it kind of looks like roots, right? It's not roots, but it kind of acts as roots as it anchors the, the plant to the bottom of the ocean. And then that kelp grows all the way up and we have many different kinds of kelp in California and it provides like i said a habitat for the animals to live in and food so some of the animals eat this super algae that is in our ocean and this is like where it all starts this is the primary producer in our ocean this is where a lot of animals eat this get their energy from and they pass that energy all the way up the food chain so this is where it all starts here this kelp and gold fast so these are kind of neat to find sometimes you can find little brittle stars in here too Let's see what else we find. Let's keep walking. Turn this around. You can see the beautiful coastline here. Oh, oh Chrissy, uh -oh. I'm checking out some stuff. Uh -oh, I see something there that we don't like to see. So as you're looking along the beach here, you can see a lot of the kelp that Chrissy's talking about, a lot of the treasures, but unfortunately there's also lots of nice treasures. Look at this. What does this look like to you? Maybe a little package maybe of ketchup or maybe a little hot sauce. And if you look at the edges, what do you think happened to it? Okay, so you might be hearing or seeing some of the birds. You think maybe sometimes the birds think this is food? Well, you're right. And they start eating it and then all this little piece of plastic gets inside of your stomach. Not a good situation. But we're making sure we're picking up trash. And if you look over there, kind of the same idea. And if you look over there, look at that one. Chrissy, I think we found a, a treasure from long Ooh. ago. What does that look like to you? That looks like some kind of jewel. 
right? This might even be something that somebody can reuse if they're doing a little project, a little creation, a little craft at home, right? Oh, this is kind of cool. I think I'm going to save this one. We can upcycle that. Nice. Okay, let's keep walking. Let's see what else we can find. Uh-oh. We're finding a lot of unnatural treasures. Boys and girls, I know a lot of times through the years people have celebrated birthdays, Red Ribbon Week with balloons and release them up into the sky and 80% of Mother Earth is ocean. So what goes up must come down, right? So this right here is a balloon. So when it pops, where does it end up? In the beautiful blue sea, right? And little creatures, little sea turtles, think this is food. They think that it's a sea jelly. They eat it once again goes into their stomach. So if you can, no balloons, or if you do use balloons, pop them and put them in the trash so they don't end up on the beautiful blue beaches here. We find a lot of balloons here. Oh, really sad. And more good treasures though. Okay, I see something else coming up here. Wow. We picked a good stretch of beach here to find some stuff with all this tilt. This, what is this? Let's switch this camera around so you can see a little bit better. Everybody show me your muscles. Let me see your muscles. Let's see those muscles. Yeah, this is one half of a purple muscle. And then what's growing on here? Some limpets. They almost look like little volcanoes, right? These are all along the tide pools. So you'll find mussels attached to the rocks out here, that cobblestone reef I was talking about. And you'll also find these limpets attached to the rocks and even some of the animals that live in the tide pools. And these little limpets actually have little feathery arms that stick up out of here and they catch their food as it drifts by. So that's how they find their food. And see these animals are kind of living together symbiotically in the tide pool. Put that back and another one. Oh, here we go. Mickey found another one that's actually attached. So there is both sides of the shell, and there used to be an animal living in here at one time. And when they're living in there, the shell sticks together very tightly, and you can't really open it. But they are edible. You might even see mussels in some types of foods, right? That you eat, in soups and stuff like that. So these mussels are edible. And the birds that live here love these mussels to eat all that yummy stuff out of the mussel. Okay, let's keep walking and see what else we can find. Let us know where you're coming in from too, where you are joining us on your virtual camp out from. Hope you're having fun today on our virtual camp out with California State Parks. Okay, we found all right, here we go. I got another stringy thing, right? I talked about the balloons and the animals eating them, but this would be a really dangerous thing for the animals. You know, I have fingers, you have fingers, right? And I'm able to manipulate, but some of the animals, the birds or some of the fish or some of the uh, dolphins and whales for that matter, they don't have that. They have flippers, right? So they can't hit and they get tangled up in this. So it's really important no matter where you live, Always pick up trash, be mindful of trash around you because everything ultimately washes into the sea. Yeah, I gotta keep the beaches clean, right? And do you see these large tree logs? There's one behind us there. There's some over here that someone made a little tent out of. All these tree logs and tree limbs, where do you think they come from? How do they end up on the beach? here. Well, they wash down the creeks and the rivers. Sometimes they wash from far, far away, maybe even like Northern California, maybe even other countries. They wash all the way up the ocean or down the creeks and rivers onto our beaches. So we find all kinds of things all the time on our beaches. Remember, the ocean starts at your front door. So wherever you live, the ocean starts there and goes down your storm drains, your creeks, your rivers, all the way to the ocean here. So it affects the whole earth, actually. Okay, I found something else. Let's see. Let's see what 
this is. This is kind of cool looking. Wow, it's very shiny and iridescent. See this really, really pretty pearly color to it. You can see here. But something used to live inside here. What do you think lived here? Actually, it's a sea snail. So sea snails live in this. This one's called a wavy turban. And there are all kinds of sea snails that live all along California coast, but this one's the wavy turban. And there's actually a large snail that lives inside here. And it has actually another shell that closes up this hole here that you can sometimes find on our beach. And that holds in anything, or kind of protects it from predators, but also holds in um, moisture inside the snail and kind of helps protect it because you know snails kind of hide out in their shells right so this is really cool wavy turban sea snail you might find some of these on the beach and now you know what they are chrissy's been talking about all the seaweed or all the kelp and the uh the sea snails that's their favorite food that's what they like to eat lo and behold they're climbing and sliming about and they come across this thing. Does it kind of look like that thing if you couldn't see very good? But we know, right, Chrissy, this isn't seaweed. This is styrofoam, right? And this lives in the ocean forever. It will never decompose. So we're trying to really outlaw styrofoam so it doesn't end up on the beach because this will break up into tiny pieces floating on this, the blue ocean and will be very dangerous for some of these animals and the birds. Yep, that's for sure. A lot of the trash looks like food to these animals. Sure does. To the birds, to the fish, to the jellyfish, the whales. The whales eat plankton, right? They eat tons and tons of plankton every day. And plastic never goes away. It only breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces. So all those tiny pieces floating around in the ocean can go into a whale like plankton does. Now boys and girls, look at this thing. Chrissy and I both do beach cleanups and people come and volunteer and help clean the beach. And sometimes they find this, right? Natural or unnatural? What are you saying? It's a bird feather, right? So it would be something naturally occurring that we would leave on the beach. So the birds, like maybe your dogs and your cats, they shed their fur. And the birds, when they shake about, their feathers go a flying and they decorated the beaches. So you can see, maybe mixed up in the kelp, along with the natural treasures, you're seeing yep. feathers and things like that, evidence of wildlife. Yep, I actually see a lot of feathers here. Let's look at the kelp a little bit better, a little up more up close. You can see feathers in there. You can see those lobster shells and crab shells. All of that actually contributes to the natural ecosystem and it's actually okay to leave on the beach. Now let's do one more shot of our beautiful ocean here. Boats out there. I see a large pile of seaweed that got washed up down there. Found a nice great spot today to do this with not a lot of people around which is awesome so we are so glad you joined us today and we're going to talk a little bit more about what are some things you can do at home to join in on our beach nature search let me turn this around Chrissy was talking about some of the clubhouses, so to speak, with some of the driftwood and the pieces of wood. That might be a fun thing to do at home. Maybe go in your backyard and look around for something that you can create, some type of structure, be it for yourself, or maybe if you have a dog or a cat or a little brother or sister, that might be a fun activity. And if you get out and take walks in your neighborhood, maybe, maybe uh, consider bringing along a little bag, wear a glove, see if maybe you can find some trash and clean up trash in your neighborhood because as soon as I, as soon as it rains, you know, rain's probably coming not until a few months, but when somebody washes their car, it all washes down the beach. And 
usually Chrissy and I are getting ready to do a big international all over the world beach cleanup in September. It's the third Saturday in September, but we're not able to do that this year. But what we're able to do every Saturday in the month of September, all around the world, people are going to be cleaning up trash or in their neighborhood, their communities, their parks, their schools, if you live close to the beach. And that's how we're taking care of our beautiful Mother Earth, our sister seas in honor of Coastal Cleanup Day. So hopefully um, you'll participate no matter where you live. Yeah, protect your happy place, wherever that may be. Your neighborhood, park, beach, creek, anywhere you live, you can participate this September. And it doesn't even have to be a Saturday. It could be all month long, any day you have available to do it. Chrissy, I'm thinking they could even do it in their room. Yeah. You could even make your room your beach. <laughs> exactly. And recycle some of those items that you find and reuse them. That's part of the whole mission here, right? And staying green and keeping the earth clean and happy and healthy. So uh, we hope you enjoyed our uh, beach nature search today here at beautiful San Onofre State Beach. We hope that um, you participate in some of the other activities coming up later today as part of the virtual Great California Virtual Campout. So coming up later today um, at 7 p.m., we're gonna have they're gonna have a s'mores contest and a sing along. So check the uh, Great California Virtual Campout or the California State Parks Facebook page for the rest of the events today. And that sounds kind of fun, a little s'mores contest. Hmm. I just and had s'mores two weeks ago. Yeah, we love doing sing-alongs uh, too, so that sounds like a lot of fun. So thanks for joining us. Again, I'm Chrissy Moreno at San Onofre State Beach. And my name is Vicki from Doheny State Beach. And also, in addition to today, here at Orange Coast District, we've created a YouTube channel, and we have so many different fun activities, programs, things that you can do from home and we would love to hear back from you okay yeah so check that out on youtube we're california state parks orange coast district and you can check out all our cool home learning videos we have for you all thanks right. for joining us happy we hope to trails. do it again soon